This is Ben Eshmade transmitting from within his hut with Arctic Circle Radio on Resonance FM. On this edition, I have two very special live guests in the studio who recently passed through London. In the second half of the show, I speak to Domino Records' new signing, the genre-hopping Francois and the Atlas Mountains. But first, a few months ago, I caught up with New York City-based singer-songwriter Nina Nastasia in our central London studio. This is what happened. Ben Eshmade and Arctic Circle Radio with Nina Nastasia. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. Whereabouts are you at the moment? I mean, in the sense of you're, you've just come over to do three dates, I think. Yes. And you did Leeds last night. Yes. And and, how's and it... then London and then Dublin. That's it. Is that usual to do such a small small tour? Or no, it isn't actually. It's odd. We've been I've been working on some other things and, and I just wanted to do some more shows because I haven't done shows in a while and and we wanted to come over here see some friends. How often do you tour? I mean, is it is it a record comes out and then you feel you have to tour or? Yeah, I love touring, so I tour as much as I can. But there has been a little bit of a, a lag. I haven't kind of stuck in my New York apartment for a while. Because I got a little sidetracked, I started sewing. Really? And so I was just obsessed with sewing. So then I haven't put out a record or anything, and I realized that I haven't done any actual music stuff. So I have no reason to be even going out on tour. And I'm just getting piles and piles of, you know, oh, what sort of thing dresses, you... baby dresses. Well, I said, well, a friend of mine had a kid, and so I thought, I want to make them a baby dress. Okay, yeah. yeah. It was going to be a girl. And I was given this sewing machine. It's a really, really nice sewing machine. I was given it for Christmas or my birthday or I don't remember which. And I didn't touch it for like a year and a half because it's a little too technical and I wasn't really comfortable mm. with it. So it was just sitting there and and it became rude to the person that gave me this <laughs> sewing machine that I hadn't even looked at it. So... I decided, you know, I decided I'm going to I'm going to try to do it. And I had this reason to make this baby dress. Mm. So a friend of mine came over and she helped me follow the directions because you know how reading the directions and trying to yeah, yeah. turn it on can be difficult. <laughs> so she showed me how to turn it on and do all these little little tricks. And then I couldn't stop. Just as I was going to sleep, I would see patterns for dresses really? and start solving <laughs> problem solving in my head. It was almost like a door open, which is my my I don't usually think in that in those terms. Yeah patterns. I get very conf confused very easily. But I became totally obsessed with it. And I'd been uh, collecting fabrics, like antique fabrics and all that stuff for a long time. I'm not really knowing what to do with it, but yeah, just yeah. sort of hoarding it in boxes. You're dying to get back to that, that sewing machine by the sounds of it. Kind of. <laughs> but luckily I, I did have lots of songs that I'd started and was, you know, working yeah. on kind of slowly. And, a, and I collected a bunch of those, so I have. I mean, I have about three records worth of things. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I probably will do that because that's that's fun too. So. Do you, Do you have? You said you got three records worth. Are they kind of filed into different themes or different ideas? Do you know that that's one record, that's two records, that's the third record? Well, I've I've just been going through them because I do things really really simply. So hmm. you know, I do everything on my phone. So I record it from my phone. It was just as a little work yeah. thing. And I'm actually, I can show you. It's a, it's a nightmare because I, I'm also not very organized, so I don't write anything down to say what the thing is that really? I'm working on. Yeah. So, I mean, there's like 250 <laughs> working things that I've got to sort through, figure out what's worth keeping, trashing, yeah. whatever. So uh, I've been going through those and trying to figure that whole thing out. Do you write a notebook or something to when you go through them? How do you? How do, or do you just delete the ones? I that just you think? delete them, <laughs> and then I and then I try to organize them. Mm. But then I was organizing them like new song one, new song two. That's not. It doesn't really tell you much. <laughs> if there's a lot of them, it doesn't really tell you much. So then I have to go back and do that. But 
the records I go through with Ken and Ken mm. and Good Johnson. Um, and he'll, the two of us kind of think about what instrumentation would be good and lyrical theme. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I mean, I'm just, when I say three albums worth, I'm thinking there's about that many songs that I can yeah. get together fairly quickly. Could we hear a song? No, maybe not, not necessarily a new song, okay, but just... Okay, <laughs> <here's, laughs> what would, would you like I don't to know play? if I have. What would you like to new. play? <laughs> um, I'll play something from the last record. Yeah. Uh, kind of Courage. Don't think about it Best to ignore No one will miss you Just be slow about it Little by little you go It never pays to be dire Just the way these things go Don't think about it You're one of a million No, it's not fair. Why should it be fair? Who's first to get beaten down? Go back in bliss, go and reminisce. See what you've already done. Like it or not. It's not that bad No We do it for Our family And more Away you run Fast through the darkening That was beautiful. Thank you very much. Uh, ben Eshmade and Arctic Circle Radio with Nina Nastasia. That was from your last album, which is uh, Outlaster, is that right? Yes. That, that album, I think, is quite interesting to talk about maybe a little bit because you, you touched on the idea of arrangements before and that album was all about sort of, I wouldn't say orchestral in a full orchestra kind of way, but just kind of little hints at weird mm. instrumentation, wasn't it? Well, that one, that was the first time we actually used a, um, an arranger, our friend Paul Bryan, and he, he did all the arrangements. He worked mm. uh, a lot with Kenan and myself, um, but he, he wrote everything. 
Yeah. I, w- I would describe it as kind of like subtle. It wasn't about sort of like here's a giant string section coming in. It was all about, I suppose, were you creating sort of pictures or you were creating... Yeah, well, I I mean, Kenan is, is a huge part of that. Mm. I mean, he thinks about the lyrics and what they're saying and emphasizes them through yeah. the arrangements and all that stuff. But it's always been a really big thing to be spare and not, not using... Yeah. Tons of instruments all yeah. the time, all at once. And it's been great to work with him from the beginning because, you know, when you're sitting alone, mm. or I usually do in the bathroom, writing the song, and then you, you get a bunch of instruments in a room and you're all playing together, it sounds amazing when everybody's playing as loud, like as yeah. big as it possibly can be. It sounds great. So it would take me a lot longer to get to the stage of killing off all those great little <laughs> parts and making it yeah. spare and even uh, and better because of that and there's a certain aspect as well I, I, I can imagine this in that situation where you've brought people in even if you're being polite to them you don't want to say to them shut up there shut up there at least if someone's arranged it they've they've already determined a lot of that for you I suppose yeah <laughs> because we never really did it that way before but we didn't have anything written so we actually did have to tell people to shut up actually there was there was one time where I think it was during dogs or something our bass player was, he was hardly used at all. I mean, he, yeah. maybe three notes in the whole song or something. You know, that feels weird for mm. somebody that can play the thing. I mean, I could have plucked that thing, but, you know, he did it He did it quite well. So, But you, you seem to have been always about, or maybe this is something that's come over time, but you, you seem to be interested in interesting instrumentation because obviously you did the album with Jim White as well, which is, you know, mm-hmm. that, you know, that I, I was listening to that on, on the way in and just the... It's weird to kind of have that that mixture of the the voice and the drums, kind of as if the drums is kind of duetting with you. Yeah. How did that collaboration happen in the first place? How did you meet and decide you wanted to work together? Uh, We had done some records before that. So um, I think it was for Run to Ruin. Um, We actually, uh, original person we were going to play with couldn't do it. And so at the last minute, so we had to find someone. I think that's what it was. And we, we like. Dirty Three and this and knew his playing and really liked it. So we uh, asked him if he was available for to do all tomorrow's parties and then go to record in France a record and appeal session. Well, there's a lot of things to ask for that first time. I think that was the first thing. Was it a different process with him? Did a lot of the stuff happen in the studio or did you talk about it before you went in? We we never really have anything arranged completely before. I mean that was that. One record was the, the last record was the first time it was actually arranged, uh, and we we have ideas and work with the musicians yeah. and kind of and Kenan does a lot of you know telling people to shut up, put their instrument down. Or it was no different working with with him. Well, wait, wait for which thing? Because it was different actually for you. Follow me was actually a different process. Okay. That was more um, what we did was he did a lot of I brought in the songs. Yeah, and then uh, we had about month and a half or so in the in a workspace and the three of us ken and uh myself and jim we would play the songs and he would and we would record everything and and we would all kind of take those recordings and sort of see what worked and what didn't work and what would fit together as parts you know and yeah, and Kenan had a lot to do with that. It's a simple question, but do you enjoy the recording process? Is is it quite painful in time? No, I love it because it's still performing. I mean, it's 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 performing, but you can do it again. You can act like an ass, and it's nobody ever knows. <laughs> you can have all sorts of issues come up, and but you're okay because nobody knows. It's it's perfect because I do like performing, but. It can be a real stressor because you can you can fall on your ass. Certainly, I have tons of times. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, maybe a second song. Sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let me, let me try. Let me do this one. the urge to come apart 
scatter over the water. One love, one forever, never mending, never ending. Worn down to the the toughest piece of it dying to die There's nothing about us, just a ruin of jagged rock, leaning over the ocean. Amazing. Uh, Benish made an Arctic Circle radio with Nina Nastasia. Um, what was the name of that song? Oh, it doesn't have a name yet. <laughs> okay, I don't think it, it has a name yet. Um, it's quite a basic question to ask, but you know, it's, it's always interesting. Where, where did you, who inspired you to want to sing or write songs in the first place? I think just feeling miserable and alone inspired me to hole up and start writing, mm. but not. I didn't really have a desire to do it as anything serious. So, were you a big devourer of music when you were younger, or I devoured like my parents' music. I didn't really go out seeking music. Actually, I devour movies much more than music. I mean, I love music, but I never remember who does what or what you know. What's an important movie for you then? Tell me a few mo- movies. Um, you know, I really like London Kills Me. Do you know that movie? No. I really like it because it's it's super simple. The guy, this guy, just you know, he's he's living on the streets and he's lived on the streets all his life and drugs and everything. He's trying to get off the streets and he goes to try to get a job and you know he wants to be a waiter, but the he's got these no horrible shoes. I mean, they're practically <laughs> no shoes because he's living on the streets. Got like they're almost like sandals and they're totally not presentable for this nice restaurant. So the whole movie. Oh, and the guy that's interviewing him says, you know, okay, uh, I'll give you a break. Uh, uh, you can work here, but you've got to get shoes. <laughs> Which, for this guy, is it's like saying, you know, well, you need to raise like $100,000 before you yeah. work here. It's in- almost impossible. So the whole movie is about him, like, trying to get his sh- stuff together <laughs> to get some shoes. I, just, I really like that movie. Do you still go to the cinema when when you can or...? I, I watch them at home. Yeah, with popcorn. No, with toast. <laughs> I like toast. <laughs> I, I suppose this leads me on to asking then: when, when you're when you're writing songs, is it in a sense of isolation then from other music? Does that? You di- mean just I try not to get distracted? Yeah. Yeah, that's a big problem. Trying not to get distracted. Well, you were saying, obviously because I've been sewing. <laughs> sewing. <yeah. laughs> And I really like series. Those um, I'm really into the whole HBO series and oh, okay. know, those yeah. television series. So I try to be disciplined about it and write, even when I don't want to write. Which is a funny thing because that's I guess that's when you start to you're, you're actually taking it seriously, and then you have to yeah. be disciplined or you you want to be better at it. So make another record and have it be better than the other one. So you have to work at it. Well, it sounds like you don't you don't listen to that much you know an awful lot of music or anything else. So maybe you don't have to buy. I, mean, I just don't seek it out. But it's not like I don't like music. I lo- I love music, but I just don't. I'm not like a collector, and I don't know anything much anything much of anything about it. So I'm not one of those people that can talk for hours about music. <laughs> <laughs> 
What 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 are you like if someone compliments your music? Are you easy to take on compliments? Yeah, I mean it's always it's a little uncomfortable. Obviously, that's what you want to hear, and you want to go, ah, yeah, thank you, ah, great, you're right. <laughs> I don't want, you know, I don't know. I actually kind of quite like when people say that they don't like it because it's um, that's a lot harder to say. I don't. Know. I mean, I actually Kenan's uh, aunt. I love, I adored her. She was a. Uh, Amazing. She had a real kind of like Southern Belle kind of thing. Very yeah. charismatic individual, really beautiful woman. <laughs> she she said to me, she goes, you know, I love you. I, I don't know what your music is about. I, I, I just, I don't like it, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and I really liked it. What motivates you? I mean, what makes you want to carry on as a musician, I suppose? Well, I do, I do really love to do it. You know, it's difficult to try to make it and turn something you love to do into mm. a life and put pressures on it. Is a, mm. it's kind of that's kind of weird because then you really have to be disciplined to be better at it. Or, you know, I do love it. I mean, there there are times where I have periods of time where you know I'm not, maybe I'm not performing, and then. I perform and it seems like I'm terrified. It's like I'm starting from the beginning really? okay. again. And it's, it's very, very nerve wracking, but, but even then I really, I really love it. And even okay. the, the, you know, even the difficult parts of touring, I really love, you know, even playing for people that hate it. I kind of like that <laughs> in a way. I mean, it's off. It's not, it's not as nice as a whole room of people that like what you do, but yeah. it's interesting. It makes you work harder and makes you kind of, I don't know. When you are performing live, do you enjoy it actually at the time? Yeah. I mean, sometimes, like last night, I really did. I was very, very nervous because I hadn't played in a, in a while. And I felt like the show, you know, but it was, um, yeah, it was very enjoyable. I mean, it was a great audience and it was enjoyable. Some some shows are a lot of work because the audience is not as vocal in their mm. you know, enthusiasm or they're not participating how I want them to. Yeah. Know, sometimes I ask a lot of the audience and it's really actually not their job. They've actually paid to see me <laughs> entertain them, <laughs> not them entertain yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, <laughs> And there's some shows that actually I have a great time and I <laughs> there actually were horrible shows actually because yeah, maybe I should be a little more nervous and work a little harder. <laughs> How do you draw people in if you feel that it's, you're not connecting for whatever reason? Is that a matter of literally singing louder or just kind of wouldn't know how, how to go about it really? Actually, you know what? Uh, I have to give this to Kenan. Some, it can be very good advice. He said, uh, you know, if if, if it is allowed if people are in a real boisterous mood and they're drinking and they want to talk and it's you know he says you should you should, you know my first reaction would be to play something really loud and aggressive mm. and get them but he said no, no no play something very very quiet and it's sometimes might not work if mm. people are just absolutely not interested in hearing you do anything then maybe not but it does usually draw people in to be quiet so i do feel like I've never gotten mad at the audience. If they, I feel like I should have gotten them interested. Yeah. And if I didn't get them interested, that's my problem, not their problem. I mean, could we have one final song? If you'd, we'd have a sip from sure, your, your whiskey yeah. first, if you like. <laughs> yeah, I will. Um, oh, I'll do another one from Outlast. Right? Okay, brilliant. Look around, you got a good thing You don't ever have to make the money You got a little room to spread out And a table for some company You just take your time It'll be alright Just don't give up I know what you're thinking 
and all the good news To say it would be shameful To keep it in means you lose You just take your time To work things It'll be alright Just don't give up I wish I could remember The refrain that I had written To assure you you're forgiven I know where you're going Maybe you should reconsider You just take your time To work things out It'll be Show me how it looks to love you I'm not a stranger I know you well And it's hard to tell You to tell It was amazing, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Plans for the future? What have you got in store? You, you're obviously working on a new album. Another record? Yep. Um, maybe two. And then um, lots and lots of traveling. Lots of traveling in 2013. Have you got any ideas on what you want to do with these next records? Um, go platinum. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I um, No, I'm going to talk to Ken and figure that out. We'll listen to them again, give them names, and then yeah. Once well, they got names, figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you got? I mean, uh, have you got any secret ambitions that you haven't fulfilled yet that you kind of like to do? You know, I wish I had like another friggin' two thousand years or something. I'm so slow. I move like a snail. So, what I'm really hoping is that they figure out the whole um, prolonging life for maybe another five hundred years. Yeah, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of ambitions that I have. I'm just, I'm super, super slow, which doesn't look very ambitious, moving that slowly, but... Give me one ambition, then. Uh, neurologist. Okay. <laughs> Nina Nastasia, thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> 